if you have ever wondered why don't I do the things I say I want to do? Why do I say something is important to me but never make the time to do it? Or maybe you have been wanting to change a particular habit in your life but you just can't seem to be able to get rid of it. Or you have been wanting to start new habits like working out, eating healthy, reading more books or even learn a new language but you start and in two or three days time you go back to your normal life. You result back or you fall back into your usual habits even unconscious but there are so many changes you want to make in your life but you keep saying and never actually doing it if you are from my country around the ending part of the year through to the new year we make so many new year resolutions about the things we want to change in our lives the habits we want to build but guess what by january 15 we fall back into our normal lives our, our usual habits Unconsciously, does all that I've said sound familiar to you? Then you are not alone, my friend. I have been there too. But it looks like our friend James Clear have the answers on how we can build atomic habits. The tiny changes we can make that will lead to remarkable results in our life. Hello there. You are welcome to the channel. My name is Truce, and today I want to share with you five lessons I learned from this book, Atomic Habits by James Clear. Let's get straight into the book. Anyways, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button. Let's get straight into the video. This lesson from the book is the 1% rule. The author says that if you can get 1% better each day for a year, you will end up 37 times better. If you get 1% worse a day, you will drop to nearly zero. So what starts as a small win or a minor setback in a day accumulates to something much more. So they seem to make little difference in our day-to-day -day activities, but give it months or even years and it accumulates to something enormous. For example, if you save a little money now, you are still not a millionaire. If you hit the gym three days in a row, you are still not out of shape. So we make a few changes, the results never come quickly and we slide back into our usual routines. Like if you eat an unhealthy meal today, the skill doesn't automatically go up. And a single decision is easy for you to dismiss. But the author says that success is a product of daily habits, not once in a lifetime transformation. Two. Forget goals and focus on systems. We have always been told that if you want to achieve whatever you want in life, you should set specific and actionable goals. But here the author argues that if you want better results, you should forget about setting goals and rather focus on your systems instead. He says that goals are the results you want to achieve and systems are the processes that lead to that result. And he mentions so many problems or why we shouldn't set goals or problems that are with goals. And I'm going to just list a few of them to you. So number one reason why we should forget about goals is that he says winners and losers have the same goals. Number two problem with setting of goals is that achieving a goal is only a momentary change. For example, if I have a messy room and I set a goal that I want to clean my room, I'll only have a clean room for now. But if I maintain the same sloppy habits that led to my room being dirty, then my room will get dirty in, I mean, in a few hours time or in, in no time my room will get dirty and I have to motivate myself to clean the room again. So he's saying that forget about goals and rather focus on systems. What led to the room being dirty? Maybe you have to adapt to things like if I pick something from here, I have to put it back in that same place. Another problem with goals is that he says goal restricts happiness. So you hear people saying that once I reach this milestone, once I get a job, I'll be happy. Once I graduate, I'll be happy. Once I get this particular thing, I'll be happy. And he says that you are putting happiness off until you win a milestone. So goals restricts your happiness. And another problem with goals is Achieving your goal only changes your life for a moment. And another problem with goals is that he says that goals are at odds with long-term progress. For example, many runners train for months and train for months and as soon as they finish the, the, the cross line, there's nothing motivating them to train again. So they just go back to living their life. And so he says that we should screw goals, forget about goals and put in systems that will lead to that result instead of just a goal to achieve a particular thing. And our third lesson from this nice book by James Clare is that build identity-based habits. So basically, habits are a behavior that has been repeated so many times to become automatic. And he says that 
the two reasons why we usually have challenges with building habits or letting go of certain habits is that one we try to change the wrong thing and we try to change our habits in a wrong way and so james clare argues that it's hard for you to change your habits if you do not change the underlying beliefs that led to your past behavior or that led to the formation of those habits for example you may want small money but if your identity is as someone who spends rather than creates you'll be pulled towards usually spending rather than earning more money so the author quotes it beautifully that the ultimate form of intrinsic motivation is when a habit becomes part of your identity. So if you have pride in an aspect of your life, the more motivated you will be to maintain habits that are associated with it. So if you like how your hair looks, you always do what you can to maintain your hair and make sure that it looks beautiful. This also makes a lot of people walk through life following habits or norms that have been attached to the identity saying oh i am bad at remembering people's names i am horrible at math and it just follows but james clare says that progress requires on learning becoming the best version of yourself requires you to continuously edit your beliefs and to upgrade and expand your identity so basically your identity emerges out of your habits what you do on a daily basis the decisions you make the things you do with that whether consciously or non-consciously are as a result of your habit so now let's move forward to the next point to understand why habit matters too so as i said in the previous point number four we are going to discuss why habit matters so basically habits matters because it helps you become the type of person you wish to be and so habits are the channel on which your deepest beliefs are formed. So literally you become your habits. So basically all habits proceed through four stages. So we have the cue, we have the craving, we have the response and we have the reward. So I'm just going to give you little details on how each of them is or what each of them is. So the first one, the cue triggers your brain to initiate a behavior. So the craving, which is the second step, are the motivation behind every behavior. What you crave is not the habit in itself, but the change like in which it delivers to you. So for example, you do not want to turn on your television, you just want to be entertained. You are not motivated by brushing your teeth, but by a feeling of a clean mouth it gives you. People who smoke cigarettes, they do not crave the cigarette itself, but the feeling or the, the kind of relief it gives them after smoking. So basically, every craving is linked to the desire of change it gives you internally. So the third step is the response, and the response is the actual habit you perform. And the last one is the reward, which is the end goal of every habit. So the thing with habits is that by the time we become adults, we hardly notice the kind of habits that are running our lives. Most of us never give a second thought that we tie the same shoe every morning. Or when we enter a room and it's like we put on the light. So basically, after decades of uh, mental programming, we fall into these acts and patterns. So it just becomes automatic and normal to us. And we don't even stop to question whether these things we do are right or wrong. And our final point is, we are going to discuss the four laws of behavior change. And these four laws can help you either create good habits or break bad ones. And from the introduction or the introductory part of this video, I ask certain questions. I ask questions saying, if you've ever wondered why you don't do the things you say you want to do, you want to lose weight, but you never even put in the efforts to start, you want to save money, you don't do it. Like so many other things, you want to start a business and you don't do it. These answers or the reason why you say these things and actually don't do it can be found in these folders. So stick with me and let's run through them as quickly as possible. So I realized the video was getting too long and I still had so much to say. So I'm dividing the video into two parts. This will be the first part and the second part will come out in my next post. So you want to subscribe and put on your notification bell to be the first to see it. And most of the questions I asked at the beginning of the video, the answers will be provided in the next video. So stay tuned and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye. Thank you.